Welcome back, Promise Scholars. Chapter 3, we talked about thankful bags, did we? Right, we talked about thankful bags. And the three questions that I had for you was, who are the main characters so far in the text? Where did it take place? And what is the problem in the chapter? The main characters are Junie, Mary, and Roger. And it takes place at school. And the main problem in this chapter is Roger didn't have anything in his bag. Hmm. So Roger did what? He didn't do his assignment. We're going to move on to chapter four. And chapter four of Julie B is diving. Hmm. Let's think about diving. What do you think? Diving. Does that actually make any sense? Hmm. I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? Let's begin, scholars. Mr. Scary stared at Roger a real long time. He said they will talk about this later. Hmm. Talk about this later is the school word for getting yelled at when there's more time. Roger slumped way down in his seat. After that, Mr. Scary looked back at the class. Okay, everyone, we're going to continue now, he said. But this time... Please raise your hand if you actually brought something to show. Luc Lucille sprang out of her chair. I did, I did, she hollered. I brought the best thing you ever saw. What do you think it is? Then she reached down and she pulled a big giant purse out of her thankful bag. Wait! Till you see this, children, she said. I brought something that everyone in the whole world is thankful for, and I have lots and lots of it. After that, she turned the big giant purse upside down. And woo wee! Out came money, shouted Lucielle. Money, money, money. I am thankful for money. Room one did a gasp at the sight then all of her mouths all of our mouths fell open at once and our eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger and then bam we died for it money we hollered money 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 i started to grab and it's the paper kind i yelled lucielle lucielle laughed real hard and happy. Then she turned her thankful bag inside out and more money fell out on top of us. Wee, woo hoo, yippee, we hollered. Mr. Scary was hollering too, I think, but it's, it is hard to hear your teacher when you are money diving. Finally, he raised his voice to a louder level. It was the level that meant business. Go back to your seat. He hollered, now. Everyone stopped grabbing and they hurried back to their seats. Speedy, fast, except not me. Instead, I kept on sitting on the floor because I had a teensy problem. Mr. Scary glared his eyes at me. Junie B. Jones, did you hear me? I said, go back to your seat. I nodded real nervous. Yes, I said, only I have a teensy problem. I pointed at his shoe. You're actually standing on a five. <laughs> and so if you could just lift up this one shoe right here, I can get my money and be on my way. I tapped on the foot he should lift. Then I waited 
and waited for it to move. But it did not actually budge. Instead, yikes, I felt myself getting lifted off the floor and I got carried right back to my seat. Mr. Scary sat me in my chair. I smiled real twitchily and I smothered my skirt. Okie dokie, I said. I believe I just, I will just sit here now and behave myself. Mr. Scary kept on standing there. I waved my fingers at him. Alrighty then, have a good day, I said. He took some deep breaths. Deep breaths are what teachers do to keep from screaming. Room one stayed quiet as a mouse. I could hear Mr. Scary's nose whistling. But now was not the time to tell him he needed a tissue probably. Finally, he finished breathing. Then he picked up Lucielle's big giant purse and he went around the circle and he made all of us put her money back. Sheldon hung his head. I'm sorry, he said. Free money makes me cuckoo. Herb nodded. Me too, he said, especially to the paper kind. At my house, I don't even get an allowance. Me neither, said Roger. My parents expect me to live at home for free. Lenny rolls his eyes. Oh, well, I get a whopping quarter for taking out the trash. Seriously? That's it. One quarter. He threw his hands in the air. I mean, why even bother? Mr. Scary snapped his fingers. That means knock it off. After that, all of us stayed quiet while Mr. Scary went to the board. He stood there very thinkingly. Then finally, he picked up the chalk and he added money to our thankful list. After he finished, he, told, he took Lucy out by the hand and he walked her to the door. Boys and girls, Lucy Al and I are going to take her money to the office for safekeeping, he said. But while we are gone, I want you to I want you all to stay in your seats and I want you to think very, very hard about what just happened here. He narrowed his eyes at us. I think we all know that Lucy Al's family is wealthy. And we are all very happy for her. But there are lots of other things to be thankful for besides money. Right, Lucielle, he said? Right, she said back. She took her head around in a took her head around in the air. I am also thankful for my shiny, gleaming hair. Then she kept on shaking it and shaking it until Mr. Scary said. Lucia, please stop. He looked at her. Believe it or not, Lucia, there are plenty of people who doesn't have money or shiny hair, but they are still very happy. Lucia fluffed herself. That's just nuts, she said. Mr. Scary pulled her out the door. Now that's the end of chapter four. My three questions. This week, we only have two. My two questions are, at the beginning of chapter four, why did Mr. Scary tell Roger that we'll talk about this later? Second question, why did Mr. Scary make everyone go back to their seats after Lucielle threw the money in the air? Those are your two questions that I would love for you to answer. This is the end of chapter four video. I will see you for chapter five. Have a great day, promise.